Okay, hello, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to take a little step back in this video and try and just re-emphasize the plan for this project. Because we've been doing a number of videos, looking at a number of um, different software applications and things that we have to set up. And only recently we started to actually, you know, utilize everything that we've set up in creating this, this Internet of Things architecture, this really unified architecture. And I'd like to just try and explain this diagram a little bit more. Hopefully it helps in what we're trying to do. Now, essentially, you've got kind of three uh, main components to uh, this particular project. We've got the PLC side of things over here. We've got the microcontroller side of things over here, the embedded system. And then we've got the cloud account up on the Internet. And what I want to do is I want to join all these together. I want to link them all together. I want to visualize the data in each aspect. And I also want some user interaction, some control from one side to the other. Okay. And essentially, we're trying to get some control from this side over to this side. But we're going through the internet and visualizing the data as we go through that process. Okay. Now, I've kind of said you could have, right, we've got maybe one laptop control in this or another laptop control in uh, this one and then well essentially another laptop could be um, visualizing the data on the internet but you can kind of do it all in the one one place if you had a separate power supply or something from your USB 32 or well you could you could actually just still have a run off if you have enough um, USB ports but anyway sometimes it helps to think about it as these three distinct parts and when they're not in the one computer it gets a bit easier to see what's happening but anyway, let's just talk a little bit more about this. Um, I've got a microcontroller system, so an embedded system here. Um, you know, used heavily in industry, but maybe more traditionally associated with kind of home automation and stuff like that. And this could be looked at a little bit like the IoT, the Internet of Things. Um, and although we still use the term IoT in industry, a lot of people prefer, prefer to use the term IIoT, the Industrial Internet of Things. And when you're using industrial components like a PLC, you're really bringing in the IIoT. So I'm trying to give two kind of examples here of this being used. Let's go back over this side, let's see what's happened. Well, we have an ESP32 microcontroller, and the main reason we're using that is, well, we can connect some IO to it, like a normal microcontroller. Um, so some sensors that we can get some readings. <coughs> and in the videos, I use a, a BME280 sensor. <coughs> Excuse me. And the other big benefit is it has a Wi-Fi enabled chip in it. It has a Wi-Fi antenna, so we're able to go straight from a wireless protocol up to the cloud. We don't need any additional modules or anything like that. And I can use the very popular Arduino IDE um, software platform to develop my system and then send that data up. And that's really what's happening on this side. We develop some code that um, stores information from our BME 280 sensor, so it reads information, stores it locally, and then I've enabled the Wi-Fi chip and created like an MQTT um, protocol, uh, a pub sub uh, publication subscription protocol that will push data basically up on to my cloud account. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Over on the other side here, um, we have a bit more of a longer route to get the data up onto the cloud. Okay, I've got a PLC, I'm using a Siemens, um, uh, it's an ET200SP PLC that I use. You could use a Siemens um, S7-1200 as well. Anything that once it has an OPC UA protocol. So to come back a bit, I have PLC, my PLC running, I'm using TIA portal to code that. And I've got some IO that I'm, you know, reading data from or I'm controlling. Now, I have to try and get this data up onto the cloud, but I don't have a Wi-Fi enabled chip or device as part of my PLC. You can buy some of these additional data on, uh, add-ons for the PLC, but I don't have one available to me. So what I do is I download and I install a local version of Node-RED on this laptop. So Node-RED is included in this laptop. I connect it via my Ethernet port, um, the PLC to my laptop, and I can use the OPC UA protocol to read the data from those devices. So I can pass the data from my PLC into Node-RED, 
Um, so I'll need Node Red installed, and I need depending on your version of TIA Portal, you'll need UA Expert, um, also installed. So my data is on my PLC. It's now coming into my laptop and stored on Node Red, and I can use Node Red to develop an MQTT wireless protocol using the Wi-Fi enabled part of my laptop to send that data up onto our cloud device. So we're doing something similar on both sides, but we just have to have a, an intimate step, uh, an intermittent step there before we can actually push it up onto the cloud because our PLC doesn't have any kind of Wi-Fi enabled um, setup on it yet. So that's the way I've gone. Um, there is many ways that you could do this, but this is one way that I've done it. So then on my cloud account, I have two things installed. I have Node-RED installed. So I have the same a version of Node-RED installed up here in the cloud, on my cloud um, computing. And I have a version installed locally on my computer. So they are the same program, but different installations of them. Okay. Because um, I want to create a dashboard to visualize both my data from the ESP32 and my data from the uh, PLC. And the other benefit of Node-RED, as opposed to some other dashboard um, kind of software packages, is I'll be able to create some user interaction. So I'll be able to create buttons and switches and things like that, that if I press it, it could actually turn on or off some of my I.O. down at the lower levels. So that user interaction is really nice. So I have Node-RED installed. I also need IBM Watson installed because what IBM allows me to do is allows me to store data so when the data gets pushed up here, it gets stored in IBM Watson, and then Node-RED sort of monitors what happens in IBM Watson and visualizes the data. But it gets kind of it's held here in Watson, IBM Watson. And it's not a massive data store. It's kind of really just a buffer. Um, it will only hold your data maybe for a day or maybe less. I don't know, depending on the, the level of account you have with them. But we're just looking at this happening in real time. We're not really looking at storing the historical data. That is another area of IoT that you would um, have to look into around big data and process and all this huge amounts of data and storing it and whatever else. But for the moment, we just have a bit of a buffer that's going to show us the data that's happening in real time with a small historical trend. But it also gives us some administration, IBM Watson. Uh, it allows us to develop API keys, allows us to store the data in particular areas for us, and then it gives us access then from Node-RED with API keys and with other devices that we can link into it and pull the data out where we want. So IBM Watson's doing a bit of data store for us and a bit of administration. So ESP is pushing data up to IBM Watson, doing some administration to say, yes, you're allowed to put that in here or not, storing some data for us, and then Node-RED can monitor that and visualize that from us. Exact same thing ha is happening here at PLC except you have to go through a, a version of Node-RED here um, using the OPC UA protocol. Then we can use an MQTT protocol to get us up onto the cloud. Again, storing it in a section of IBM Watson, using some administration, and then pushing that onto the dashboard. The last part of that then is just all your user interaction. And really, the way I do it in the project, and there's, you know, you could play around with this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my PLC system and I can, I'll have push buttons and start buttons and stop buttons here physically on the device that will start and stop my system, okay? But I also want some buttons here on a dashboard that will start and stop this system. And I also want maybe a push button here or a temperature reading or something that when that gets activated, we'll, I'll be able to see that it's activated on the dashboard and that will be able to come down and control the PLC. So really, the PLC has three ways of being controlled. It can get controlled directly from the buttons on the device. They can get controlled by the dashboard, or it can get controlled indirectly from the ESP32, which is gonna go kind of that route of through the dashboard and back down to turn on the system. Um, and you know, equally, you could look at developing the project further again, that some of the PLC, maybe when the PLC is finished, it will send data back up to the dashboard and back down to the ESP32. It'll send a command to turn on a light to say that the process is finished, something like that. You could take this as many ways as you want, but for the videos that we're gonna do, we're just gonna look at um, pushing data up onto the cloud and then eventually having this push button 
that will activate the PLC and also have the push button up here that will activate it. Okay. Um, probably something that you can maybe initially see from this is well, we've three ways of turning on the system. Maybe that's dangerous. Um, you would need there's a whole layer of security and a whole process and a whole other topic of discussion of how you can secure a lot of these areas and um, you know make sure the right people are only accessing it and under the right conditions it's being accessed and making sure that nobody can hack in at different parts of this levels to control your system um, that is another layer of this but we're not going to go into that and um, it's another area of IOT just like the data store processing the data is another area of it just like maybe machine learning and stuff like that it's another huge area that we're not going to look at we're just looking at how we can create this architecture to allow it to all communicate together so that's that's a high level of a discussion around what the system the architecture is going to be how we're going to create this iot architecture this unified architecture the different software pa uh, packages that's involved and some of the different protocols that's involved and um, the different nodes that's involved within the within the system